me just refresh your memory where we were on Monday. Where we were on Monday with Willow, which is a new computer chip from Google that they just uh, they just um, tested with the new quantum computer. Two years ago, we talked about quantum quantum computing because it uh, it it could process fifty four what are called qubits. That was astonishing at the time, and I read article after article. Once you get over a hundred, it's going to be like. You won't believe what this can do. And we're at the very beginning. Two years ago, we were at 54. We're at 105 qubits. A qubit is a way to open up, I I don't even know how to explain it, the universe um, and test a theory uh, and, and, and search for all answers at the same time. So right now, we have to think linearly. We have to think, okay, two plus two is one. No, two plus two is two. No, two plus three. Uh, two plus two is three. No, two plus two is four. Yes. Okay. So it's ones and zeros. It's an either a yes or a no. Doesn't have to be, but that we don't have to go into that. Yes or no, and it tests all of them vertically instead of linearly. Got it. So they can. It can come up with answers like nobody's business. Uh, and it, it works with quantum physics, which quantum physics, everything breaks down with quantum physics. Uh, Einstein said, God doesn't play dice. Well, if quantum physics is true, perhaps he does a little bit. Um, because th- th- what they're finding now, especially since Monday... Um, is one thing. First, they can solve the most complex problem that we have ever tried to solve. I don't even know what it is. I'd like to ask that question. But it took this new quantum computer uh, five minutes to solve a problem that would have taken our best supercomputer 10 septillion years to solve it. Go through the, it's million, billion, million, billion, trillion, trillion, quadrillion, quintillion, septillion. Okay. That's a lot. In fact, they describe it as vastly more than the age of the entire universe. Quite an an understatement there. How old is the universe, they think? The the accepted one is 13.8 billion years. Okay. 13.8 billion years. This is 10 septillion years would have taken to solve this problem with our best supercomputer. I would like to ask the question, what was the question and what is the answer? And how do you know it's right? All right. So now that happened on Monday. They announced that on Monday. Now the guy who's the head of Willow, the guy who's in charge, he's the founder and the leader of the Google quantum AI team. He's a physicist. He said the result, the high-speed result, lends, I'm quoting, credence to the notion that quantum computation occurs in many parallel universes. So, I mean, you have to almost go to Marvel to understand. It's it's as as if when they put a question in, all the Spider-Man movies are stacked up on top of each other. You know what I mean? Not the Spider-Man, you know, Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3 with the same actor. He's in one universe, but all the other ones with different actors, they're all happening at the same time. Okay? That's what it means for parallel universe. Um, and he says it shows that that's where the quantum computing is happening. It's going, it's actually opening up and going into other universes. It's fascinating. You want to hear why they think that, Stu? Sure. It's nerd. It's very nerdy. Okay. But it's really cool. All right. Okay. So you know what a a, a neutron and an electron does, right? Mm-hmm. What does an electron do? When you're talking the atomic scale, electron, it I, circles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it circles the neutron. And the neutron, it reason why the electron circles it is it keeps, it's like it, it acts as a force 
to keep the neutron in place. Mm-hmm. Without the electron, it goes, it just like explodes and goes away. Okay. Okay. So you have to have the electron going around it to keep the neutron in place. The reason why they first came up with quantum uh, physics is the electron, when you observe it, it disappears. No, when you, ob- when you observe it, it's there. When you don't observe it, it's there and then not there. There and not there. There and not there. There and not there. And so it keeps going. It's, it just disappears. How do you know that? The energy. You're... The energy. It's one or the other if you observe or not. I can't remember which. It's been years. But it, the energy goes full, nothing. Full, nothing. Full, nothing. Hmm. In those nothing areas, the areas, the the neutron should dissipate. Okay, what they thought this is the theory is that it's actually slipping into several different universes as it's going around to hold that neutron in place in all these different universes. What? Okay, <laughs> crazy. This is really what they think. Yeah, that's really what that's they incredible. think. Incredible. That's that. So that was the theory. Mm-hmm. So he's now saying, "Yep." This proves that that theory is where we're doing the computations in all these different universes. Hmm. Now, the problem is, over the weekend, there was a massive nerd fight. And uh, another guy uh, who is an astrophysicist, Ethan Siegel, he says, that's ridiculous. And the Google guy should know. Uh, And he says that it has nothing to do with it, blah, blah, blah. So there's a nerd fight on the, he said, parallel universe, uh, parallel universe and multiverse are very different. Now, I don't even think Marvel can explain the difference. I have no idea. (laughs) But that's the level of the nerd fight we're in. However, here's what's, what's really cool is, at 54 qubits, okay, so about half of what we have now, and don't ask me how this happened, I have no idea, they opened some, you know, a, a molecule, and they could measure it here, and when it was turned on or whatever, I don't I have no idea. I'm sorry for everybody who has really passed an eighth grade education. I apologize here to your head's going to hurt. But they opened it somehow or another, and they were observing it in, like, Silicon Valley or wherever this is. And then they opened the same one. It appeared in London. And they verified that the changes they made in Silicon Valley were happening with the, it's the same molecule, and it was happening at the same time someplace else. What? Isn't that nuts? Yes. They thought that that time, at 54 qubits, they thought... That's going to lead us to the discovery of how to travel without airplanes and everything else. Like instantaneous travel. Instantaneous travel. travel. Mm-hmm. That would be mm-hmm. incredible. Yes. Okay. So all of these things are coming up. Now, now listen to this. What they say is um, this is such big news because we're going to be able to solve some of the biggest problems. Okay, I want to know what the first question... Are you interested in what the first question was? Sure. That took that? Okay, I don't know what it is. I'm sure it's just mathematical, but I have no idea what it was. Uh, I'd like to know. And do you think these are our biggest problems? When, When you have the most powerful, they're saying it will tell us how to make batteries better. That's what we're going for? We're going for how batteries can be made better. <laughs> they said also it could uh, uh, it could further humanity uh, by curing some diseases. Okay, some some diseases. It's good. It could be big. Could be maybe. Yeah, not I so think big. that might be an understatement. I mean, you're opening all this up, and you're like, "Yep, we're going to be able to drive for four hundred miles, maybe as much as seven hundred miles." Come on, mm. come on. There's got to be something bigger than that. Okay. So anyway, as all of this is happening and makes no sense to anybody, I think all of the scientists are even bluffing. They don't know what they're talking about. Um, It makes no sense. Let me give you this story. 
New sales data uh, data from uh, BookScan shows that Bible sales have increased 22% through October of this year compared to the same period last year. I don't know if you know this, Bible sales have been going down for maybe about 100 years. Went up 22% this year. Uh, in the first 10 months of the year, American, Americans purchased 13.7 million Bibles, which Bibles now are on track to, surpre- to, suppress, uh, to surpass last year's 14.2 million. Here's why it matters. Over the same period of time, print book sales increased less than 1%. So people are, you can get it online. People are actually going out and buying paper Bibles for their house and their family at unheard of rates when everywhere else the Bible is going down. Why is that happening? Try to relate it to the first story I just gave you. Nothing makes sense. Mm. Nothing makes sense in our world. You're like, I, I, what? People are looking for foundational truths. They're looking for foundational truths. The world is changing so rapidly, and nothing makes sense. This is really good news. This, seeing that, that's the first sign of, of an awakening, where people get so disillusioned with things, they realize their lives, the country, war, science, everything is out of control. There are no experts to listen to. That you're like, okay, maybe I should start listening to myself, and is there something bigger than me that makes sense? This is an extraordinarily good sign. As the world makes less and less sense, the only way to solve this is a return to universal principles. And, and, and it will still... I can, I, do you know that the Big Bang Theory was developed by scientists, developed by scientists, um, and they used it at first, uh, the religious uh, people used it at first to say the Big Bang Theory uh, it proves God exists. And so science at that time accepted it for a little while, and then they, then they were they're like, no, 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 it doesn't prove, it just, just started. And it started as, well, that's the way God created. So God lit a match, happened the Big Bang, that explains your expanding universe and everything else. And now scientists use that because they've cut the original part of the theory out that God lit the match. And it leaves you with the question I've asked a million times. Right, Big Bang. But what lit the match? What was just before it? Where did all of that come from? Who started the fire? That was part of the original Big Bang Theory. God. Mm. And they conveniently axed that part to now disprove God. We don't know what the answers are. And with quantum computing, the world's going to look and science is going to look very different very fast. But there are certain truths that used to be self-evident, that are eternal. And we're looking for them in record numbers.